103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, July 5th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Everyone stand for our special uh, July 4th uh, representation. Ready? That was, that was yesterday. God <laughs> bless America, <laughs> our home, sweet um, home. Uh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice Obama face there. <laughs> it's hilarious. Our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs, our leader, and George. Welcome all. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about <laughs> atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. And I also, also want to interject that some of us are not in Knoxville. Oh, yeah, that's true. No, no you true, know, like this... we got me, who's halfway to Chattanooga, <coughs> and true. we've got uh, Dread Pirate Hicks, who's with us all the way from British Columbia. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, this is a radio show going out on the knoxville airway so i always want to hit that note uh that they if they listen to this on the car radio home radio whatever then uh, there are groups here available that they can join and have a community of free thinkers nice also did you know that there was a streaming atheist call in video show like uh, tv show this again. been broadcasting here in knoxville for over 10 years so now listen, streaming did i'll, you know I'll the check water? it out I'll, i know it's got good ratings i know it's got mm-hmm. good actors but yeah I, and Actors. people have been talking about it and it was great, but like I'll get the flea bag on Amazon Prime when I'm ready for it. Right now I'm just waiting to like get through Boy Season Two. Um there's like a new season of Harley Quinn hopefully coming out. I'll get the flea bag. I'll watch it. Trust me, I'll get to it. But like if I was gonna watch a bunch of comedians pretend to, or actors pretend to be comedians, I'd rather just watch comedians. In fact, if you really want to yeah. watch some comedians, check out Amazon uh, Laugh, Last One Laughing. It's a bunch of Australian comedians together. And Rebel, I don't know if you're going to stop me anytime soon. I'll just keep going. Uh, no, I was just going to let you go. <laughs> See where it went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> it goes nowhere every single yeah. time. All right. Hey. All right. No, uh, it's uh, it's broadcasting at least uh, streaming here in Knoxville now. It used to be on TV. Uh, we Let's switch to an internet format. You can have a little more leeway in what we say. Uh, so check out it. Uh, we'll tell you how, more about how to find it on YouTube right after the show break. So stick around. Um, <clears throat> if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our digital free thought radio hour page and use the messaging function to set up questions for us or comments. And we'll try to get to them on the show. Uh, Wombat, what do you have for us today? I think we should open up with a really cool talk on congratulating Dread Pirate on becoming a professor. Well, we're going to talk about that more. Well, but before we get into that, let's and open welcome up with Boudreaux, by the way. Yeah, welcome Boudreaux. Hey, Boudreaux. Uh, let's let's open up with our uh, weekly invocation by our own Dread Pirate Higgs. All right, an atheist outlook is sunny because so much of life can be funny. Without a hereafter, we cherish the laughter and savor each moment like honey. Oh, Brahman. 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 All right. So we are going to work on that because I am totally about high energy gigs. <laughs> A little bit. Dread, why don't you open us up? What happened to you uh, recently? Well, um, yeah, I, I was just talking to. Uh, a college administrator for our local uh, college, um, Selkirk College. It's a small community college uh, that has a number of campuses around uh, southern interior here. And I uh, spoke to them about uh, the possibility of, um, of uh, teaching a, a critical thinking course. And so uh, after we kind of went back and forth a little bit, uh, there's a huge amount of interest from, from their point of view um, and I'm looking at developing, uh, you know, some curriculum and and getting this thing out there uh, coming up in probably October. 
So what exactly are you teaching? Well, so the course would be called Skepticism 1.0, Adventures in Critical Thinking. So it would really just be around uh, developing critical thinking skills, uh, learning, you know, a methodology for uh, examining evidence uh, and for, uh, you know, sort of discriminating between what is uh, justified uh, in terms of belief and, and what isn't and, mm -hmm. and how you discern the two um, and how to engage in SE, straight oh. epistemology. Yeah. Very, very cool. So I thought that would be a, an interesting element so that, you know, students each could at some point during the course be the, the uh, interviewer and uh, the interlocutor. So, um, again, teaching them a real world skill uh, to, uh, you know, examine beliefs. I think that's, that's really cool. And feel free to use... It, that's for sure. Yeah, feel free to use any uh, my media or anyone else's to, to help exemplify good and bad. I can even give you some special bad videos I never published just to show you like how this doesn't work sometimes. Like, yeah. long well, I mean, it would actually be great to have, uh, you know, some guest speakers because it's going to be run virtually. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Tell so. me when. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm knocking on that door already. Um, All right. George, what do you think? Is critical thinking a real world skill that should be taught in school? Should we waste time on that? Oh, hold absolutely. on, hold on. Let me put my let me put my right face on. Uh, should we waste time on this? You got the libertarians. <laughs> we got them all over the place. They want to get in our faces. Use our tax dollars. I say no. We got to stop this. What do you think? Are you with me? Or are you are you a patriot like me? What? What do you got to say? Well, um, <laughs> my That's brain doesn't scary. go as fast as your <laughs> mouth. I'm not a high speed <laughs> thinker. I'm, I'm more of a reflective type person, so uh, I'm, I was only half in jest when I said my brain doesn't go as fast as your mouth. <laughs> However, I do think that, yeah, it would be very good to teach this in school. Mm. And um, my God, how do we do it? How, you know, having moved to the south of the U.S. from coastal places, I, I feel like I'm in another world. I'm on another planet here. And it has taken me four years to realize that. It, it, it has not been easy. And, and it's like, I, I have to understand, yeah, um, a lot of people around here really do not think the way that I do. Mm. How do I bridge the gap, you know? I mean, people automatically make assumptions about me that are not true. Mm -hmm. They believe that I believe in God, for instance. Yeah. Which you get I that do by not. default here a lot. What's yeah. that? You get that by default just being here. Yes, exactly. I, I'm just learning that. And, and um, you know, people assume not only that I believe in God, but they assume that I'm a Christian. Yeah. Or that they're... You remember their church that just never showed up on Sunday for the last couple of months. Like, you're a Presbyterian of Third Street Baptist, right? Or like, what? What does that even make? Don't those conflict with each other? It's like, what do you mean they conflict? My my religion is entirely rational. Larry, has anyone ever assumed anything about you just from the look of it? Oh yeah, I'm sure most of my life. I've I've been an atheist since like 1973. And uh and I didn't before come out it was the, cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh I didn't come out of the closet for nearly 30 years, so mm. people assumed all kinds of things about me, I guess. And I guess they still do. Strangers mm. on the street, you know, see me go by, you just assume I'm an, uh, a Christian. Yeah. Because that's the default position in the South, especially in the Bible Belt. But uh, that's one of the reasons I think it's very important for people to come out of the atheist closet. Uh, they're going to, uh, or the deist closet as it is, as it were. But, uh, until you do, people make assumptions about you that you're religious, that you buy into all this stuff, and uh, even the other atheists in your in your community will think that you're religious, and that's that's it all. So help me out. How does critical thinking help you? Critical thinking helps me get to uh, reality. It get, mm. helps me shave away the the supernatural aspects of things that have never been proven or been demonstrated. Um, it, it helps me in a myriad of ways, you know, day to day, especially when you when you 
watch TV and see all these claims that people are making about the world that oh my you gosh. know, using yeah, the, critical thinking, you know, is not true. I want to mm -hmm. tell you the the new the new cycle is one of the the most lying things. It's all fake news. It's all fake mm -hmm. news. It's the worst news ever. It's all fake. Uh, well, you gotta you gotta it. make sure you get the some right news. It. Whatever I tell well, you yeah. is the truth. It's good. You gotta remember that. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boudreau, I got a question for you. Uh, do you think that we should spend our good Canadian tax money on critical thinking in college? And is there a place for that? Uh, I guess the first question is, will they accept the, their fake money? Well, I mean, <laughs> there's not, no American real, presidents right? on the money, so I don't know. Like, I don't mean if it's <laughs> right. real or not. Looks like monopoly. I heard it's plastic. I heard it's plastic. I heard Canadian money is plastic and smells like yeah. maple syrup. That don't, can't don't, be real. <laughs> don't don't leave it on your dash. It'll melt. <laughs> oh no way! That's terrible. Uh, yeah, I, I think absolutely. It's uh, gosh, I wish it was something we do here, here in the states. Um, but I mean, how could you not use those tools for any anything? Great, you know, mm. science, so history. Just, I mean, it, it, it's a universal tool that'll apply to just about anything. So, um, yeah, I apologize about my my video here. I'm I'm at the at the socially distanced pool and socially uh, distanced pool. Yeah, where all the water everywhere. molecules are six feet apart from each other. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Tyrone, I I Go didn't really it. answer your question, and I wanted to get back to that. Um, this is George, and what I. And what was leading up to was, well, um, to teach it in school? Yeah, absolutely. But how do we get it into the curriculum when all those people who are on the school board are going to fight it? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially in the lower grades. What gets me is like, we don't really teach evolution in anywhere, anything short of college. Right. And, but a lot of people don't even go to college. Right. And, but so right. It, it, it doesn't get to the general public, especially so the true. basic concepts of evolution. So, so true. I mean, if we can't get that there, you kind of, how can you expect to get critical thinking there? Yeah, I'm so well, lucky. I just watched PBS shows growing up or else I would have been completely unprepared going to college and be like, evolution? Scientific reasoning is like, what is all this? Mm -hmm. I only have my Bible. It's weird. Um, right. Would you mind if I got feedback from Dale? Uh, Dale, do no, you think we should it. teach critical thinking in schools? Do you think it's worth the money? And what kind of benefit do you see uh, from a society that teaches that regularly as part of a curriculum? Well, I guess ignorance would be the alternative in that we know that's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, however, I, there was one political party that during their, their uh, platform in 2000, I forgot what year. Uh, you got a zero out of twenty chance. <laughs> they had a uh, had a thing in their platform about teaching critical thinking, and uh, they were addressing that because they apparently this party has control of the school books in America, mm -hmm. and um, they did not want critical thinking as part of the curriculum mm -hmm. because specifically it. Uh, engendered a you uh, children questioning their parents and a uh a rejection a of tradition and consequently if you're going to have someone that doesn't object to a lot of things they, you probably don't want them thinking critically but a uh, dread pirate you're, you're the one that's doing the um the course in critical yeah. thinking yeah then i would recommend hats uh, now, <laughs> recommend what? <laughs> Has think responsibly. He's wearing oh. a hat that says, please think responsibly. Now, oh, I love it. Please, please think responsibly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can't force someone to do it. Maybe you can request, but. Uh, Gotta so, make it cool. Uh, by the way, there's an excellent show on TV that is all about critical thinking and a, on a more practical basis, and it's uh, by Penn and Teller, and it's called Bull Feathers. Uh, no. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> Though is I that do, still being broadcast? It's on uh, Hulu. We get it on yeah, Hulu. Yeah, there's no doubt you can find it. Okay. Yeah. I do like cool. when 
seeing magicians break down their tricks. Uh, only one, I, I don't like, I, I love the mystique of how magic works, but I also love how much skill is involved in trying to make it look like you're doing magic. So there's like two different parts of my brain that get tickled when I watch a magic show or watch a magician break down the trick. Cause I'm like, wow, that's so technical. There's so Tyrone. much little small details here that involved with making the magic. Yeah, happen. Tyrone, you're an artist and um, you're thinking analytically, which I really like. I'm an artist myself and I have done that from an early age is that resp we respond emotionally to the good work of other artists. Mm. We're drawn in, we're hypnotized like any other member of the audience, but we're also analyzing at the same time. How did he do that? Right. And Can then I like do that too, you know? And I think the biggest thing is regardless of whatever I saw in the magic trick, whenever I understand how a trick works, it's always, how do I put it? Less of a jump of impossibility compared to how, what I saw at first. So if I saw a guy like pull a quarter of a guy's ear, I'll be like, he just pulled a quarter of a guy's ear. But then he's like, no, I just put it in my pan and I, and I pulled it out. I'm like, oh, well now I can't see that trick for what it is anymore. But my skepticism is now like at a healthy level. Cause now I know people can't pull coins out of people's ears and that there's techniques to do it. And that's cool. And I, and I can use that. So that the next time I see a magic trick that fools me, I'll be like, well, he's not doing the car trick. He's not doing the, the lady behind the curtains. It's not a false <laughs> mirror. How is he doing this? How is she doing this? That's incredible. Like in my head, it's like, I know this is a trick, but I'm also really impressed by the fact that you still managed to fool me. Like Exactly. We, we admire his skill. Right. And at pulling it, it off. Knowing His how artistry. the trick works yes. doesn't ruin the magic trick. It just makes it yeah. more impressive the next time I get fooled. And I feel like college, can, the, the curriculum that Dread High Pirates is teaching me, the worst thing that could happen is that people's standard of evidence increase and that the next time they need to believe something, they're, they're applying more critical thought. And that the, the only thing that will come from that is a better world, in my opinion. My God. I mean, let's say if we have um, a minister who has a way of working the crowd and we can analyze the shtick that he's using. That's a Yiddish word. Yeah. Shtick, and I, I, boy, I don't know how to translate this word. Um, May the Schwartz act. be with you. His act. You know, it's, it's like, it's stage business. It's mm -hmm. um, stagecraft. Yeah. Stagecraft. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a calculated, method of working the working the crowd and i was right. just thinking of you know there are ways that adolf hitler worked the crowd the same way that a southern preacher works the crowd you know they start off real slow and reasonable and rational and very very slowly increase the pace increase the pace increase the intensity like a dj intensity volume and and by the end of the speech, the guy is just screaming, sure. Um, and yeah, the they're... audience is just eating up everything that he's putting yeah. out and cheering. You know, gonna... Trump. Trump. Before we get to Trump, because I know you want to get to Trump. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Brad. Do you think you'll teach in that capacity? Will you start slow and go fast? Have you thought this out? Like, do you have a syllabus ahead of time? No, like... no, no. And it's not no, a Dread technique Pirate, that Pirate. I have used. Dread as Pirate. A Gary, Gary, Gary. What do you think? What do you think? Okay. Um. So your question again, Ty? Yeah, how are you going to teach this class? Um, well, it's, it's going to be over probably 15 weeks. Uh, we do two wow. sessions a week at an hour and a half and then break those, uh, those hour and a half further down so that each, you know, during uh, each session, there's a, a time dedicated to the SE part. Mm. Uh, so applying practical, you know, applying the skills practically uh, in a in a sort of virtual class setting so you know it's a, it's about you know and i think it would have to go at you know at, at general speed in order to keep people's interest you don't want to start out slow with the idea that you know you're going to grab someone's attention and keep it uh you got to come out guns blazing essentially uh, talking about you know logical fallacies uh you know um biases cognitive biases and all that kind of stuff really to sort of build the crude uh toolkit in order to finesse and discover nuance and all that um 
as you move further into the uh, material. Mm. What kind of material are you going to have? And um, yeah, basically like that. Like, well, I, I've got, you know, I've got a couple of good texts um, that uh, I can refer to uh, and, you know, certainly some online resources. I mean, I'm not creating anything new. Uh, it's all out there. It's just a matter of uh, putting it in a, into a package um, that's, uh, you know, not only palatable, it's, it's interesting and, and tasty. Dale, you said it looked like you had something to want to say. What's up? Mm. I was wanting to ask uh, when a person after goes through this, what do you hope that this person will use in a practical day-to-day -day thing? Uh, I mean, we, we do a lot of dealing with the of, uh, splitting hairs and right down to the minutia of, of religion, but how might someone use it, let's say in, I don't know, uh, car buying or the practical daily exercises, absolutely like scam um, products that are being sold, perhaps. Yeah, frauds. Yep. That and that's exactly what I I see the benefit on a very practical, pragmatic level is, you know, examining some of the claims that we are constantly bombarded with uh, in in media of all kinds. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, you know if. You know, if it turns out we have younger people uh, that show up to, uh, you know, participate, that would be great. But if we can get, you know, some of the older uh, generation as well who have children to whom then they can impart uh, these newfound skills, then, you know, it's carrying it into the generational um, thing where, you know, we might not be teaching critical thinking in school, but if you teach parents critical thinking, that trickles down into the family and then translates into a you know a, a younger generation i feel like dread's just doing his small part to make canadians even more better than the rest of americans <laughs> go go <laughs> team <laughs> like, we're gonna dread, make sure, um, gonna make sure someone what is the political or uh, religious climate like where you are oh it's it's very christian um so uh, in the newspaper, um, every second week, uh, it advertises religious services offered in, uh, in and around Grand Forks. And 12 of the 14 are Christian. One of them is Buddhist. And the other is the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Nice. We managed to get in there. Nice. <laughs> Very good. You're doing God's I work. Would... I would like to mention something about this, uh, getting back to the previous topic where we were talking about uh, the speaker using a, 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 manipul a ways to manipulate their audience. Mm -hmm. um, there's a term that goes that's in churches nowadays is called like a spiritual manipulation, mm -hmm. where the, uh, the preachers, like a director in a movie, knows how to manipulate the emotions of, a, of their audience so that by the end of his, you know, standing and sitting and music and, and soft talking leading to loud talking and, and emotional um, movement, uh, get the people at the end to think that they're actually got the spirit of God moving inside them. Right. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's nothing more than manipulating the, the emotions of the audience that they're talking to. And uh, it's embodied in that phrase, spiritual manipulation. If a person listening to this broadcast might want to Google it and look I've at it. I've also heard of flashpoint gaslighting. So uh -huh. gaslighting is sort of like subtly lying to a person and making them believe something that's not true for a long period of time. But flashpoint uh -huh. gaslighting is getting one person in a crowd of people who all tell them the same lie. And just through peer pressure, they accept that it's true. And mm -hmm. if, you t if you're like the lone non-believer in a group of believers... And they're all saying, you've just been, you know, consumed by the spirit of God. You mm -hmm. right. can stand up. You feel like you're good. You might feel yeah. something where it's just like, oh, I guess I am. I guess if you well, don't have of a rational you feel basis. Something. Yeah. Like yeah. A, I've, I've written an article on my, on my blog about a, a, like the movie Old Yeller. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you ever see that movie? I read the book. Yeah. You didn't. Well, did you cry at the end? I did not cry at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people, when they see the movie, they cry at the end. 
And what was the director's point? I mean, what was he wanting you to do? He's wanting you to ma manipulate right. your emotions right, over right, right, the right. course of a couple hours so that at the end you have this great cathartic mo moment. Right. I've cried and during that's what creatures yeah. do every Sunday. They, they manipulate your emotions mm -hmm. to try to do it as much as the director would. There's also just like in the standard way of talking slowly but very confidently makes people listen to you. It's very, mm -hmm. very weird. And it's not just used by preachers. It's used by salesmen, um, sure. politicians. Anyone that's trying to convey yeah. or sell an idea mm -hmm. is, is using techniques to make you appreciate them more than maybe you right. should. And once and you Larry, have that information, Larry, you can um, go on with as critical you thinking. Spoke, as you spoke, I was thinking uh, the phrase popped into my head, church as theater. Right. Mm. You know, um, mm. It's a performance. It is. Yeah. Uh, especially in these big mega, mega oh, churches yeah, where they have music and, and video and um, dancing a lot of times. I dancing. Mean, it, it is a dancing? performance. Mm -hmm. Yes. I actually had wow. a, a, an interpretive dance come to a Baptist church I was at one time. Really? You can imagine that. Wow. Yeah. How times have yeah. changed. So I've been out of church so much and been reading about the history of churches so much that I've been getting into like puritanical ages where there was no dancing, no frolicking between genders and like you can't eat certain foods and everything. You have to wear certain clothes. So the fact that we can now have churches accepting dancers in a Baptist place, it's like history is like falling over itself. It's just like, what? Well, it was a lone Cromwell dancer. There weren't, there weren't two of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a cat. Hey, we're at the bottom of the half hour. Well, Larry, why don't you take us Already. Out? Mm. Okay, this is Digital Free Thought Radio R and WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Stick around.
welcome back to the second half of the show. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, July 5th, 2020. And uh, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and you can find us at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, start one. one! No, we do it again, and we all <laughs> say start one. Larry, do it again. Yeah, I'm ready. Go for if it. If you don't find one in your town, Start Start one. One. That's right. That's good. Thank Another you. large free thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, they've been around for more than 20 years, and you can find them at rationalists.org. Uh, go there, go to their page and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Um, we talked about the Atheist Call in TV show. Well, it's wait a it's second. Time. There's an Atheist Call in TV show. Yes, yes. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get mad. <laughs> Don't get heated. <laughs> now you can go to YouTube and find it by looking up Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And we've got 10 years of archives of shows uh, under Freethinkers United Coalition or Free Thought Forum, Knoxville. You can look at it and find it either way. Nice. We've got to start promoting With that. us on the show, we have the Wombat uh, co host. Hey. Then we have guests uh, Boudreaux, Dread Pirate Hicks, and Red Leader, and George. Uh, Boudreaux dropped out, apparently. Yeah, but he was with okay. us. Kids. That's all fine. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, uh, where, where are we going now? Wombat. All right. So we were talking before about how Dread Pirate's going to be teaching critical thought in schools, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And we're here to support any any endeavor that he's going through with that also going to be doing some se and also talking about the benefits of doing that and then also how he's going to teach it um how about this the idea of talking in front of people is always one of those scary situations but also the idea the weighted burden of these people aren't going to like what i'm going to tell them is like an additional weight especially if you're like in a predominantly Christian area and you're, and you're talking about like things like critical thinking and people are like, is he making me question my faith? I'm not allowed to do that. I'm just going to not like this guy. Do you have any, like from you as the human side of a teacher who's trying to do in his best effort, teach what is actually a useful skill for like adults? Do you have any apprehensions and what are your current concerns at the moment? Um, well, certainly the apprehension is that no one, no one wants to sign up for it. So that would put an end to it real quick. But um, in discussion with the uh, college administrator, uh, you know, the fact that this is going to be on a virtual platform opens up the audience considerably so mm. that we're not taking simply from the, you know, sort of 8,000 people uh, locally uh, that might attend the local college, but, you know, now from 100,000 people uh, spread over a number of communities, uh, you know, through a, a pretty large geographical area. So um, that eases the uh, sort of apprehension I have of having no one interested in it. I think, you know, we'd also we, be able to record the classes. Yeah, I, I, I think that would be a reasonable thing. You know, Dude, if you did that I mean, and made it like a curriculum on YouTube, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I've seen, uh, you know, some other uh, courses, um, a couple of, of uh, college professors down in, uh, I believe, in Seattle, uh, have a bowl. Um, a what? <laughs> <laughs> course, <laughs> they call it's called calling bowl. You know. Um, oh, it's a French thing. Okay. I, I, I don't want to swear on on, sure, on the sure. radio here. So. I appreciate it. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that that's what the course is called, and and they advertised, or I mean, they they just put up everything, all their courses on on YouTube. So, and that's even a course I'll be taking some material from. So, yeah, no, I mean, if people are interested in you know paying the fee to get a credit so they can hang a little certificate on their wall and say I'm a critical thinker, that's great. But uh, you know, it's certainly something I would like to see everyone have access to. Um, and as many different formats and as many different people willing to teach the subject as there are might be out there, mm. all the better, I think, uh, in the long term. 
Dell slash Red Leader, let me throw something at you. We're going to go back in our time machine. We're going to go back in the way, way back machine. And you're, way back you're machine. yeah, you're now a, a, a young, uh, a vibrant adult in, at the start of his life right after high school. What would this class need to tell you to make you interested in hopping in? Like how, how, what would it need for you to be like, okay, I'll check this out. When I was in the military, I did uh, psychiatric work. And in our training, one of the things that at that time, the most popular things going on was uh, transactional analysis. I'm okay. You're okay. The games people play. These were uh, fairly well understood concepts. And one of the things we did is for an exercise was we watched soap operas. Oh, you would, you would call out, you, you would, you would uh, label the things that people said, the interactions. And what we found was, is that in soap operas, very, very little of the, of the uh, dialogue is on an adult basis. For the most part, it's someone telling someone, oh, you've got to do this, or someone blaming somebody for their kind of ills. Mm. Now, that would be a practical application, but I might suggest uh, watching Fox News. And I believe there would be a lot of bull feathers called. Mm -hmm. So you're saying uh, if, if the class had sessions where they were going to say, we're going to watch the news or we're going to watch the soap opera, we're going to break down how these people are talking with each other. You'd be that like, that would be a I... practical a application. Plus you might want to consider the commercials on TV. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I know. Mm. Why is this person saying this? Uh, where are they yeah. getting this information from? And I like how can that. we check it out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that and, and that would be a, certainly an element I'd like to uh, employ is is bringing, you know, the 30-second or one-minute commercials and then just having the class a roundtable discussion to break down what the message is, how they're trying to get it across, what they're trying to sell, and the manipulative uh, the manipulations that they're employing to do it. Mm. You Great know, practice. I'm thinking about categor categorizing the techniques. Yeah. You know, putting these techniques into into containers, you know, like uh, like in cognitive behavioral therapy, as I'm, as I know it. Um, that's I, I really would like to come back to this <clears throat> transactional analysis. Uh, its day came and went for a while, but and but it's a really great concept, and I would recommend that the viewers uh, take a minute to Google transactional analysis, uh, especially on YouTube, and watch a few videos on it just to get that tool in your tool chest. So I don't really know what transactional analysis is. Maybe I've done it, but I don't know what well, the term means. What does it mean? Like the last two or three things we said to each other was a verbal transaction. Oh my uh, gosh! When you, when Where's my receipt, Larry? I know you've been. I know <laughs> you've been taking things from me. And I got my taxes to pay too. Oh my God. <laughs> but if you analyze those, uh, as Dale was saying, you, mm. you find out that you're, that the people are talking to each other like grownups or they're talking to like an adult to a child when mm. you're telling them that they should do something that they're not doing, mm. uh, that, uh, there's other ways of breaking it down too, but that's, that's the basis of it is to analyze the transactions that you're going to. And the best thing to do is keep it in mind when the transaction is transpiring so you can see what the the person is trying to manipulate you into. Oh, uh, man, that's uh, so I good. Might, I love it. Yeah, go ahead, Dale. I might suggest also, as far as critical thinking, to look at some of these political commercials that go on. Sure. Now, we know that these commercials work or they would not be doing them. Right. But uh, we've got you know people on TV now that are saying that they are 100% for you know who and that they're against this and they're against that and it's it is just obviously a way to attack someone's emotions you sure. you know the, the voice that's very yeah. dramatic you know he, this is going to be the end of our civilization and so forth and so on uh i'm i'm really sorry that with we having this uh, zoom and all that we don't have our political candidates doing Lincoln Douglas debate with the time period and all of that, and then just let them fight it out back and forth instead of having moderators and all. Right. But I was trying to say <clears throat> that critical thinking, political off uh, uh, voting would be a great way to apply it that would benefit not only the person, but your community at large. Mm. You know, one thing that occurs to me in, in this discussion 
is that um, here in the U.S., in the state of Indiana, I believe, we have one or two politicians who are attacking academia for teaching critical thinking. Say it isn't so. <laughs> well, do we have to combat this yeah. on a larger scale? I wonder what the benefit on their side is to do this. Is it just to appease voters who look, who might have a chip on their shoulder from a perceived idea that people who go through college or critical thinking courses look down on them and they're trying to, you know, ingratiate right. themselves to those people it's a, or threaten them. Or is it more of like a conspiratorial, you know, uh, gray men sort of like a, Hey, the dumber we can keep these sheep, the, the longer we can keep them dumb, the better, like the less questions they ask, the more, fruit we get maybe it's a bit of both i don't know i feel like um i definitely do feel that there is a uh, idea of a us versus them mentality regardless of whatever your classification is if you're a plumber you might look down on like people who, are, who choose a scientific as a career path because you in your head think well we're plumbers they're scientists they they aren't us and they might even look down on us maybe it just takes one interaction for you to color all scientists as people who hate plumbers but everybody needs plumbers dude everyone has toilets so <laughs> i was talking on discord with a guy who was like i'm i'm a, I'm a plumber and i don't and i i don't think that's a bad career and i know there's scientists out there who look down on me i was like scientists don't look down on you we need plumbers too like everybody needs a plumber like <laughs> my job is the one that could be like chopped off the block but like we need plumbers and stuff like that we need miners we yeah. know that stuff yeah. so blue collar people might have the idea of like hey critical thought not that important and people who have it may not like us as much and that's very easy for us to be like okay well if that's the case we're just gonna be a block a voting block and we're waiting for the politician to be like, I hate people who ask questions and think critically. And they're like, we're going to vote for this guy. And I'm like, how's that a thing? Yeah. How is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Dred, um, there's a couple other videos out there that you might be interested in, including in your course. Um, Peter Popoff, you know, the, the, uh, yeah. the healer. Uh, there's a great video out there where, um, who was it? The Amazing Randy. The amazing oh, Randy, yeah. uh, caught He's him great. with He's his, great. with He's his great. radio signals and his, yeah. his uh, ear. Another one is Marjo Gortner. Uh, have you ever heard of him? He was a child preacher, a prodigy uh, that his parents raised him to be a preacher. I mean, from the very earliest age. And he, they trained him basically to, to manipulate the crowd. And what's interesting about Marjo Gortner was when he got to be about 30, he, he realized that he was really hurting people doing this. And he was taking advantage of them, basically robbing them using their emotion instead of a gun. And he turned and did an expose of all of it. So oh. you might be able to find yeah. that video. And what's his it. name? How, uh... Marjo, M-A-R-J-O-E. Marjo Gortner, G-O-R-T-N-E-R. -E uh, actually, there's a, uh, there's a link I'm looking at that I'll put the okay. uh, link in our sure. chat so you can get to it. Cool. Fred, if you were doing this class in if in a brick and mortar building, it would have also been cool to have like a taste test with Coca Cola versus like the generic store brand, and you put them in like just undisclosed cups. Right. And you say we're just going to do a taste test with ten people who volunteer who can drink soda, and we're going to see which ones you guys like better or which one you actually think is Coca Cola, like the brand. And more than likely, it's going to be a fifty fifty split, more or less, because they are the same ingredients. It's mostly water plus some sugar, right? Yeah. And so the idea is, how is it that people are willing to spend upwards of eight times more for this sugary water than this? And then you can look at all the advertisements that people have been exposed to since they were youth. Tika Cola being branded alongside Olympic athletes in the background of uh, American Idol songs, like connotated with very successful people throughout a youthful age and how people understand the jingles and how they like attach it to their national identity. And it's like, you are buying a brand that has been substantially incepting ideas of you wanting it since right. you were young. Like you have to realize that like a lot of the things that we're talking about in this, in this classroom isn't stuff that's happening to you right now. It's stuff that's already happened to you. You've come into this class with bias right. and it's important for you to recognize what that is. Yeah. I don't know. That would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Did you know, one one thing interesting is back when uh, drinks were like five cents, 
Oh. Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> Coke and Pepsi had a war. This is history. Not, I no, no, no. I, I, do, I, remember, I do remember when they were six cents. I remember going, so this is how old I am. I once in my entire life bought something with a nickel. And so I can say I've done that at least yeah. one time. And it was a Tootsie Roll Pop. <laughs> yeah. So I remember that. I remember that. Walking back well, I remember time. you'd be able That's to put a, pe- a penny and a nickel in a drink machine and get a Coke. Oh, man. a long time ago but anyway uh <laughs> coke uh raised their price from five cents to six cents at this time okay and pepsi decided not to that you know we'd save everybody 20 percent of the price of it but people interpreted it differently mm. they, they interpreted that they're buying the better stuff the more expensive stuff right the stuff that you know it costs more the for premium them. Yeah, the premium, premium stuff product and it, it backfired on pepsi and I bet so, that was Coca-Cola's hand in making sure that that perception skewed that way. Cause they wouldn't just be like, Oh, we're so lucky. People think yeah, our expensive product yeah, is more. It's like, yeah. let's twist mm-hmm. this. Spinning it. Yeah. 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 Spin super important. I think mm-hmm. there's so much to talk about dread. There's no shortage of stuff to, to cover. I will bring up this though. Kind of an important thing. Um, there are of course things that we might be bonded to through, you know, personal identification, like our religion and stuff like that. But there are also recent events that might make us, might make talking about critical thinking more emotionally charged than others. For example, people who get um, falsely accused of doing crimes, like in the news for something like there, while there are people like, for example, there have been sexual allegations that have happened. And while there are definitely people who have committed them and, and I'm really, I'm happy for the victims to be speak, speaking out and we should support them. There have also been false accusations as well. And people caught in those crossfires. If you, if someone had a good basis for critical thought, I think what their most important thing would be is, is a tweet good enough to condemn someone or right. should there be a more substantial means of figuring out how we can figure out if something's true or not and how we can actually go about, you know, applying consequences accordingly without like just one tweet and you're done. So mm-hmm. it's hard to talk about things like that in this kind of like particular political environment, this particular age, especially as everyone's been like, you know, sequestered in their home for a while you got protests going on. Everyone's at like this heightened sense of I've only known social media for the last eight months or something like that. How do you, how do you start bridging that kind of gap, like across that emotional divide? Cause I think most people can think are, are, uh, are most people are I, I keen with the idea of this is going to benefit me if I can think more clearly, but if it starts going to an emotional minefield, how do you, how do you start to separate the two? You know, I've been, I've been thinking about how do I talk with my neighbor? across the street, who is a, uh, you know, I've mentioned him to you guys before, right? I think he's a, an ardent Trump supporter. He feels that Fox News is too far to the left. Hmm. And um, he's a nice guy. You know, <laughs> how do I talk with him? How do I bring this man around? Where do how do I, you get past the emotions? I, or how, how do, do you I do that? And, or and, and I'll tell you what my how do you do it? What my intention is, and let me know if you think I'm all wet. Or I I thought that the way I will work with him is that I will tell him I stories. In other words, I will tell him about me, and I will be honest because I've got to start somewhere. We'll if I tell table. him you should this 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 this, sure sure sure, he's going to turn he's going to turn off. But how can I bridge the gap? Yeah, dread. What do you think? How can we bridge that gap? It's it's tough. I I I guess it's just about tone and and composure. Um, you and know, connecting. Always, you know, I guess just you know if you if you're reading the room essentially, and you and you get a sense that. Uh, you know, someone's escalating or getting triggered um, is just, you know, trying to bring it back uh, by tone and composure. Hmm. I, I don't know if there's any really good formula outside of that. See, Larry, I, I want to I make a confession here. Okay. <laughs> which is Wait, that you're actually I'm, a Trump supporter? I, well, no, 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 that, okay. yes. I, I am as much a hypocrite as anybody else. You know, at the advanced age that I am now, I can look back over my life and see, whoops, I've made this mistake. I've made that mistake. Um, and the other thing is that even though I, I think of myself as a critical thinker, mm. I can be suckered like anybody else. Absolutely. I can fall for it. Yeah. Mm. 
that doesn't make Usually you emotions are behind it yeah and that doesn't make you hypocrite yeah. like the no. path of critical thinking isn't destination it's it's the pursuit it's, it's the pursuit. a process yeah mm. and 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 it's true too that uh, we're all uh, we're all subject to uh, the dunning kruger effect at some point you what know um, scientists are experts okay. in their fields but they can be absolute dummies in some unrelated Asking women topic out. <laughs> yes without exactly. recognizing it yes yes and I shouldn't say that. There could be women that try to ask men out who are scientists and do a terrible job at that too. So it's, <laughs> it goes both ways. Um, Larry, what do, you, what do you think about dealing with people who, who are emotionally charged on a subject and you're trying to convey like some sort of critical, critical thinking principles? Like, Well, I'm not the, per the best person to You're uh, married. What's, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> you have a daughter. Uh, have you ever? You are an ever had time just like, oh, I mean, uh, we really Every should man should it. pay for my dinner whenever we go on a date. You're like, daughter, <laughs> I love No, we place. should really go to Wombat for that. I mean, street <laughs> epistemology is the answer to that. Uh, I would think. And me, I'm, I'm confrontational. I mean, when it comes to... <laughs> You know, somebody using their emotions to justify their beliefs. I'm, I'm mm. just going to start throwing facts at them. I'm going to start throwing questions at them. Which uh, has its place. Do it has its, it place. has its place for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, um, even though I don't use it as much as I should, street epistemology is where it would be at on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, using the Socratic method to to get them to examine their own positions. Mm -hmm. And Larry, what is street epistemology? We talked about this. We, it's just talking to people. Socratic examination. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, well, we, uh, we have to define this for newcomers. Well, epistemology so. is the study of how we learn things, how right. we know things. Right. And taking it to the street and talking to people one-on-one uh, -on -one is what uh, uh, Wombat does a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's using the Socratic method, a Socratic method, to examine the methods uh, to which they reach their conclusions rather than attacking the conclusions themselves. Right. And I want to throw this out at Dale. Do you think there's a better process to getting to people without emotions getting in the way? Like what is a good way to talk to someone about an emotionally charged subject? I don't really have much of an answer, but I do know that Fox News, let's take that show for an, or that channel, for example, they have the regular straight news, but then they have their editorials and you'll find that one of the things they want to do is emotionally charge their audience. Mm. And the best way to move a population is not by appealing to their sense of fair play and decency or love for their fellow man. The best way to move a population is by fear and hate and revenge and uh, protecting yourselves. So consequently, you will find people that watch shows like O'Reilly and and the Judge Janine and all of that, by the time they're through with their show, they actually have their adrenaline levels up. The old Yeller tried was a movie that tried to tug at your emotions. Uh, Fox News, for the most part, tries to hit them with a sledgehammer. So if you can yep. be aware that people are <laughs> lying to you and they're manipulating you, why don't you look out for that? You might have uh, somebody who says, yeah, I'm a Christian, and this uh, politician over here is uh, talking about how he was saved, you know, after his father died and stuff like that. He might just be trying to manipulate me. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it's surprising how um, almost glaringly obvious some of these manipulative uh, tactics become uh, once you sort of become accustomed to the onslaught that they are uh, in these different media forms and whatnot uh you know sometimes I, I i kind of shake my head at my own past at having been you know having been you know entranced uh, you know essentially put in a fog uh of you know these erroneous beliefs and then now sort of having that veil lifted looking back and thinking how did i ever how did i ever get there you know so it, it's an that's an interesting trip right I also think it goes back to what Nathan had said before is there's never, <laughs> there's never a bad time to stand up for true things. Right. Right. And um, it's always to your benefit to have a good method to parse true things from false things. Right. And if someone says, for example, Hey, I think tweets should be all the proof you need to like, you know, attack and, and, and condemn and get people fired and all this like, okay, sure. I hear that as a method, but wouldn't it be, wouldn't it not also benefit you 
to have a better method in the event that someone does a tweet and they end up attacking someone who's innocent and we find out that it's innocent. And then the next, <laughs> or, right, or, and the next time someone wants to speak out and they only have Twitter, they can't use it because when they do, people won't believe them because we've used that system to attack innocent people before. Like this, mm-hmm. it's not in your benefit to just have one system to, and, and sit on it. You always should try to improve it. Even if you have something that right. kind of works now, the, what science is is a system that's always trying to improve itself and it never mm-hmm. just says, hey, we're done. <laughs> we figured it out. So like we, what, I'm, what I would just say is we should always take every moment as a learning opportunity to improve the methods Absolutely. that we have to determine yeah. true things and false things. Good advice. We got at the end of the show already, Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, uh, right now we are streaming live on my Facebook page at Mind Pirate. That's How do you P-Y- spell that? R A T E. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Dale, do you have anything that you would recommend people check out? Uh, maybe future students of Dreads. That that uh, the Pin and Teller show. Bull okay. Feathers. Bull feathers. We'll check that out. They, they talk about all of these different ways that people get lied to and mm. out and out lying. I, I took a psychology course and. Uh, one of the fellows in the class was mentioning that he was a mechanic and he would say things to people like now children do children ride in this car sure yes yep. mm-hmm. well in other words why well, I, I want to do this huge repair and he, why would you ask if children ride in it, it, ah. it, it evokes, evokes the idea oh of I get it 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 it's like triggering parental responses to right uh, George, I, check out Bull Feathers. Uh, don't type that there. Yeah, well, you won't find anything. It's like BS. <laughs> <laughs> Look yeah, for yeah, BS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, George, what would you recommend people check out? Uh, any any? I, I have not. I have nothing. To... Fair enough. Two weeks in a row I, I, and going I have, strong. I have, I have nothing to. Uh... I don't challenge nothing. I believe in it. All right. So, <laughs> Larry, what do well, you? Well, you want that? Oh, that's right. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's chat. YouTube, you're already here if you're watching this. So have a good time. Also, I hope you had a good 4th of July. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Have a good time. No, we're on, we're on podcast. People listen to us on podcast. Yeah, so you're on the Let's Chat podcast on, right now. Yeah, <laughs> go to YouTube and look for Let's Chat. The, there you go. That's yeah. one bet's channel. Okay. And for myself, uh, I have a book out there. It's called uh, Atheism. What's it all about? Go to Amazon and look it up under Larry Rhodes, Larry S. Rhodes. Uh, be sure to check out my blog, which is at digitalfreethought.com. And our radio show archives and atheist songs and our other articles are on that page. Uh, if you have any questions for the show, send them to Ask an Atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. And we'll try to get to them in future shows. And if you're listening to podcasts like them, go to iTunes, Stitcher, LuminaryPodcast.com, et cetera, et cetera, and you'll find us under Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And to wind up the show, I'd like to remind everybody that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life and join us again next week. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.